Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Travis Rose. I'm the creator of the Master the Market Education that you can find linked below in the description. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to trade stock breakouts, and we're going to be talking more importantly about how you can avoid buying false breakouts, which really causes a lot of inexperienced traders to buy stocks at the top before they come back down. Okay, so first and foremost, what is a breakout? A breakout is going to be a move over a defined level of resistance. So we know that resistance levels are an area where the price seems to peak at multiple times and then come back down. And once that area of resistance is formed, a breakout is going to be when the stock is able to break above and move forward from that resistance level. Now realistically, there are plenty of different ways to trade breakouts, uh, but unfortunately a lot of new traders are taught to trade breakouts the improper way. And really this improper way is just going to cause higher risk and lower accuracy and realistically is considered more of chasing uh, than it really is a trading strategy. So this is something that we see very common when we see stocks quote unquote break out. Um, you can see here on the left side of the chart, the stock SNCA formed a peak right about there before it pulled back down. So naturally that peak or that high for the day is automatically going to become a level of resistance. Later on we see that very briefly the stock is able to break out above that resistance level. But we can see in this case, this is what is known as a false breakout. So it breaks out very short term and very temporarily and then comes straight back down and ends up going lower throughout the remainder of the day. Okay, And that's something that happens very often when we do see breakouts, especially when we're trading these small cap stocks in the you know, $1 to $10 range. So if you're somebody that's trading a breakout by simply waiting for it to make a new high and then buying into the stock, expecting it to go higher from there, Again, that's going to be more of chasing than an actual strategy, and that's going to a lot of times cause you to buy into these false breakouts and take unnecessary losses that you could very easily avoid. Okay, so what a false breakout is, is a short-term temporary move over a defined level of resistance. And that's exactly what we saw in the previous slide. So these false breakouts do often cause chasers to buy at the highs before the stock pulls back down or reverses to the downside. And we, of course, want to buy low and sell high in the market, not the opposite. So buying into these false breakouts is something that we, of course, want to avoid doing. And just to give you a few more examples here of some false breakouts, we have FLNT on the left and CETX over there on the right. And both of these actually happen on the same day and pretty much at the same time. So you can see on the left side of both of their charts, they formed a pre-market high. Um, and that's going to be in the gray area on the left side. And then once the stock market opened for the day, that's when the background of the charts goes to black. And you can see later on throughout their days, they end up breaking briefly above their pre-market highs, and then both immediately come straight back down and go lower from there. So again, this just shows you how crucial it is to avoid buying these false breakouts. Um, and that's exactly what I want to teach you how to do. So when you're trading breakouts, in my opinion, the best way to do it is to only buy a breakout after the previous breakout level or in this case their past resistance level, has now become a level of support. Okay, so this is going to prevent you from buying false breakouts, and by doing so, it's going to minimize your risk while trading breakouts, and of course, overall, is going to increase your accuracy with your breakout trading. Now, if we go back to these examples, you can see that both of them only very briefly broke above their previous resistance levels, which were their pre-market highs, before coming straight back down. So because with this strategy, you want to wait for these past resistance levels to now become a level of support, by doing so, you would completely avoid buying into these false breakouts, and you would save yourself from taking losses by doing so. So to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, we have a diagram here, and you can see on the left side of the diagram at the breakout level, there seems to be a bit of resistance on the stock. Later on, it's able to break through that resistance level. And again, what we want to do is now wait for that resistance level to turn into a level of support. And like any other level of support, we can use that to buy into the stock and safely trade the breakout without having to worry about buying into a false breakout. And what this will look like on a real chart is if we take the example here for AMD, we're looking at the one day, one minute chart. So each of these candles represents one minute of price action, and this is the span of an entire day. So on the left side of the chart, you can see that there is a high formed. It pulls back down later on is able to break above that high, which is, of course, the white line on the chart. And you can see for a little bit over an hour, actually, the stock is able to consolidate and hold above that past breakout level now as a level of support, 
which would offer us a great opportunity to buy into the stock at that support level and profit from the run that happens later on in the day. And I actually wanted to include this example in as well because many times we'll also see false breakouts happen below support rather than above resistance. Okay, so if you're somebody that short sells stocks rather than buy, um, what you would want to do to wait for the confirmed breakdown below support is instead of waiting for that level to become a level of support like we would if we were trading a breakout to the upside, in this case we want to wait for that breakdown to happen to the downside and then wait for the stock to bounce into that breakdown level which is then going to become a level of resistance. So then you could use that resistance level to short sell into and profit from the stock reversing to the downside from there. And one last example that I wanted to show is for the stock symbol IMBI. Again, this just goes to show you how crucial it is to wait for a confirmed breakout rather than to just buy when a stock is making a new high. Um, if we see on the far left side of the chart, all the way up here we have the stock at the morning high, um, right at about $5.40. So again, many people are taught to trade the breakout by simply waiting for a new high and then buying the stock with the expectation that it's going to break above that high and continue to run further and further. But again, what we see many times is false breakouts happen in the stock market. And in this case, IMBI does have a false breakout, a really only a few cents, and then comes all the way back down, and later on is all the way down to about $4 per share. So by waiting for that breakout confirmation of the past breakout level, turning it to support, since we don't have it in this case, you would be able to avoid buying this false breakout, and you would save yourself from potentially taking a huge loss on the trade. Okay, so I hope that gives you an idea of how you can safely trade breakouts and minimize your risk while doing so. If you liked this video and you thought it was useful, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you want to learn more detailed strategies, step-by-step -step and receive practice quizzes and access to our chat room with over a thousand other active traders, make sure to check out the first link down below in the description, which is my website, Master the Market. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.